Good morning. Uh, uh, it's an honor for me being here representing IDD America Latina, that is an NGO based in Buenos Aires, Argentina, in Latin America. Um, I'm going to present a project we are working in two countries, in Argentina and Uruguay. We are, the project is analyzing the impact of climate change in coastal areas in the Rio de la Plata River. We are working in four cities, two cities in Uruguay and two cities in Argentina, and these four cities are suffering floods. Uh, floods? Floods. Uh, recently, uh, the month ago, uh, 50 people died in the, the last flood in, in Buenos Aires, nearby Buenos Aires. We are, the, the project is founded by uh, IDOC, and we are working with a methodological approach of the participatory approach. We work with the social actors, the institutional actors, researchers, and technicians all together to understand the local knowledge in each one of these places or cities where we work. Uh, and the main objective of the projects is to construct together guidelines for adaptation in each one of the cities. We have, uh, until now, we have worked at the municipal level, um, preparing, trying to identify the areas at risk, risk in the city. Here we use different uh, multi-criteria analysis. We work with hydrological mapping, with uh, vulnerability, socioeconomic vulnerability mapping, uh, urban analysis, and well, this uh, index that allowed us to identify the areas as risk in each one of the city and evaluate economically the damage that the cities are suffering without climate change and with climate change. We also work at the community level trying to identify what's the risk perception in these communities and what are the spontaneous adaptation practices that they are taking on to prevent uh, or to evitar avoid rats in their houses. So instead we are working with different scales of cities. Uh, the cities in Uruguay are small cities. Um, well, it's, it's, very, it's more easy to work in touch with local authorities, and, but there are cities with uh, non-autonomy from the higher government levels. And in Buenos Aires, we have bigger cities with the difficult to work with in some moments with the local governments, um, but more autonomous uh, from the national governments. And instead, we, have, we are working with uh, countries that are in different stage of uh, undergoing an institutional redesign of their structures and laws and, and norms to work with climate change adaptation. You know, Uruguay has, uh, is in advance from Argentina. They are uh, working uh, in participatory uh, assessments with citizens uh, in, in plans in different cities, and Argentina is, is just now starting to, to work on that. But in situ of, of that, we see through the projects and in our experience through, uh, in these four cities that they, there are the same institutional barriers that we see that can be opportunities uh, to take for community-based adaptation. One of the first institutional barriers is um, that climate change and disaster risk is still seen as a responsibility of the environmental offices. And at the, at the same moment, the other offices, housing, infrastructure, and others, are increasing vulnerability and risk in uh, many of the cities, um, and there are also norms and plans in the, in the different levels that are not regarding uh, climate change adaptation. 
um, in, in the local government, does again, uh, does not an integrating, integrate uh, local development planning, does lack of technical capacity and lack of financial resource uh, assigned to deal with uh, disaster risk. They have still a traditional emergency response approach in these local governments. So we see that these are opportunities to link uh, between urban and infrastructure and emergency management and housing uh, another and, and different stakeholders playing different roles uh, through this project. Um, the other thing we see is that there's a difficult to learn from old failures. We have uh, old land use uh, regulations, old urban plans, and old poverty reduction policies. It, so only one example, the land uh, law, the regulation of the use of land in Buenos Aires, it has 50 years old. So it was created for a city that is we need to expand. Now we are working in a city, we are living in a city that we need to control the expansion and we have the same laws, no? and we are living like that. So risks are increasing because of that. And um, well, again, it's a new opportunity to, to renew this law from a, a community-based uh, approach, an integrated approach. Uh, the other thing we, we see is the tension be between different information and scientific information and what the local government needs to manage and to create programs and policy. Does not, um, you know, uh, the, the forecasting, the meteorological information is not created to prevent a risk of floods in these cities. They are old uh, protocols uh, to communicate uh, the meteoric, meteorological uh, information, and so we have to change this also, and this is import an important uh, barrier um, not only of the information, but also for the institutions that generate that information. We have to work there, and we also think that community is the way to, to demand this change. Uh, and the, the special thing we, we, we see is that, and, and, and where we see that community uh, organizations and NGOs that are working in environmental uh, issues can uh, move or drive the change is that the local governments are pressured by, in this case, by real estate markets. They don't want to get no uh, land that is going to get in uh, under flood uh, in the next years, um, they, they, they have pressure from the land market and they have pressure from uh, the unsolved needs in each of the, of the cities. So most of the information is, is, cannot be uh, known and in that way we cannot build safe cities, so uh, we think that it's important to support community organizations, NGOs that are working in these issues to move governments to change their approach uh, for thinking cities. Thank you.